right, let's talk about the first purge. What do you mean the first purge? The one in 2013? The first one that came out? No. This one, the first purge, the prequel that came out in 2018, the first purge. So, or, or, you know, was the last one also, but <laughs> now it's not because we got the forever purge, and I'll be talking about that here shortly after this uh, review. So, yeah, uh, I'm kind of tired of this franchise. I'm getting burnt out on it. Three was good. I liked it the most. And, you know, the second one improved on the first one, definitely. But this one, I don't think it does anything different here. It's a prequel, so they're going to show what the first Purge looked like. What's it look like? It looks like part two and part three, but just in one small city. It's, you know, a part of Staten Island. They're testing it at Staten Island only to see what will happen if it's going to help poverty and low unemployment. And, you know, they got their reasons. So, yeah. What do I like about this movie? I like the way it was shot. It looks good. It's got a lot of good cinematography. I like the the scene where they're at the apartment building and you got the strobe lights going off. I like the way that was shot. And there's like that one scene with they throw like the smoke grenades and they're using like backlighting with the headlights of the trucks and stuff. I thought that scene looked pretty cool. There's some good moments in here. I like the uh, contact lens thing they put in here where everyone's recording their crimes. So we get a lot of like POVs in the movie and it makes everybody look like Hobson the rapper. And for some reason, everybody has a different color. That was kind of odd. Like they're just handing everybody a different colored lens instead of just all the same. But I like that. It made, you know, it added a cool aesthetic to the film. Everyone just running around with glowing eyes. And there's a couple of good action, you know, set pieces in here. Some good gunfights in here and brawls. The One of our main leads in here is a badass. He's not a good character. He's not a sympathetic character. He's a scumbag. But he's pretty good at kicking ass. As for the negatives, a little thing, I don't like any of the masks in this movie. Like, the first three were known for having cool looking masks in each of them and then this one I didn't see anything that stood out I can't remember any of them really off the top of my head so there's no cool looking masks um yeah like people just wearing blackface because of the message that they're going for you know racism this movie's all about racism it's very heavy-handed nothing subtle about it I mean class warfare and racism was more of just a commentary in the first couple movies now it's the foreground it's the focus of the movie and this movie is just more of the same so i guess if you're a fan of what they're doing in part two and three you're gonna like this movie too because it's more of the same just more people trying to hide from purgers and then getting chased around town people trying to get through town to save somebody at the last second just lots of things being repeated here and i'm just not a fan of it uh, I can't deny that it's not a well-made movie, but it's just not a entertaining franchise to me. And once again, we just got characters that I don't really care much about. Some of them are underdeveloped, and some of them I just can't believe they're expecting me to root for. Like, the main guy being a drug dealer, and it's like, by the end of the movie, I don't think he's changed. He's just going to go right back to being a drug-dealing piece of shit, just ruining the community that he's a part of. You know, like, I don't like this guy i'm not rooting for him and i don't care about anybody else in the movie so final thoughts if you like the second or third one i think you'll enjoy this one but just lower your expectations uh expect more of the same stuff uh i just you know for me i'm just not really a fan of this franchise it's okay at best but it's just not something i'm ever gonna revisit ever again this is all just a one-time viewing experience and then that's it so i'm never gonna revisit these again i just for this movie, I just wish they would have done something different. The prequel idea, I mean, why it has to be a prequel it doesn't really need to exist. And that, the fact that the main character is a drug dealer just really ruined it for me too. I wish the characters would have been better, more sympathetic, and, you know, just, I don't know. I just, I have nothing else to say about this movie. I just don't even want to talk about it anymore. So when it comes to the first Purge, like I said, if you like two and three, this is almost of the same caliber. Uh, stream it, borrow it from a friend, or rent it at Redbox. I guess I'll do a very, very, very fucking quick spoiler discussion because I really just don't even... I have, like, zero energy right now to talk about these movies. I just... I don't know what it is. I just don't care for these movies. I don't even want to talk about them any longer. So, 
uh, there's a Halloween 2018 poster. Uh, that was funny to see. Uh, and this movie came out right before Halloween 2018. So, yeah. Um, but the timeline, like I said, I don't even know what fucking year it is. They say an elevator in this movie is broken, but then later that night, this chick just takes it down. Or the guy does, so that was a goof. These two chicks all of a sudden become bomb experts. They just take a bunch of teddy bears and they hook wires into them and now they're fucking bomb experts. I thought that was a stretch. We have this guy who's like the brother of this chick. He lies to her constantly and she finds out he's still on the island and he just won't pull the fucking trigger. He's acting like he's this tough guy. He's gonna go get revenge and shoot this Skeletor dude. And when he has him at gunpoint, he doesn't shoot him because he's a pussy. And I'm supposed to root for this pussy? I don't think so. I'm sorry, but the news would never show a murder happen on camera. I mean, especially without blurring their face. Like they don't even, they don't blur the guy's face and they just show this guy getting stabbed to death on live television news prime time where every kid in America is probably watching. Like bullshit. I know it's purge night, anything's legal, but everyone's watching this outside of Staten Island where things are still not legal. We get an anti-Trump line in here where the woman's like, you pussy grabbing motherfucker, and it feels like something they added in post because she, her lips aren't moving. We don't see her face. She's just running away from the camera, and that's when the line is said, so it feels like something they just kind of threw in there after when they were like editing the film, like, oh, this will be a good moment to take a jab at Trump. And then they have like this comic relief character in the movie, and she's not funny. Nothing she said was funny at all. And this movie does not surprise you ever. I mean, they throw in these little things that are supposed to be like reveals like oh they're gonna send in people to fuck shit up because no one's participating like we saw that coming like there's no surprises in this film it does everything that the other films did doesn't add anything new nothing interesting and so then there's like no children on this island where are all the children there's not a single fucking kid in this movie where are they i mean part three there were and we got to see those little high school girls get their asses ran down by a car in this one there's no children on satin island to be seen we get a scene with like bad strippers and I felt like I was playing Saints Row 3 all over again, getting killed by, getting attacked by killer strippers and like really you wouldn't just stab him in the fucking head. Like that was ridiculous. I mean that guy would be dead realistically. Why would they slowly brush the knife up the back of his neck? Just fucking stab him and get it over with. And then this drug king guy, uh, Dimitri, whatever the fuck his name is, the drones come and then they're shooting all his friends and then he gets out from underneath the car looks right at the drones and they don't even shoot him, they just fly away. I thought the whole point was to shoot him, but they just leave him alone and fly away. There's no fucking way not a single drone in that scene saw him, like that that they did not see him. That's bullshit. Okay, so then this like woman who was responsible for all this shit, she's like upset that they are sending people in to start executing people. But it's like, really bitch, you're the one that started this shit and not even an hour prior to this, you were like, oh my gosh, people aren't participating. I wish more people were participating. And now you see people participating and now you're gonna fucking complain about it and be like, what's this? This seems suspicious. There's something else going on here. I need to investigate. And then she gets shot and killed for it. It's like, this woman's never happy. It's like, damn if you do, damn if you don't. Really, this drug king doesn't even know what a bomb is. Like he has a bomb in his hand, clear, like some kind of C4 looking thing. And he's like, what's this? And he has to get it like, you know, spoon fed to him all the information of, of what it is and what it does it's like it's a bomb did you how could you not know that being who you are so yeah then you know we got this final act in this building we got all these people wearing blackface how subtle and kkk people attacking the black people and you know they're shooting up the church skeletor kind of comes to save the day and then gets gunned down finally dead uh, he, he should have been killed by the brother uh, that should have been his moment but no and you know, he shoots the bomb, and I like that it took three bullets to add a little bit of realism to the scene. Like in all other movies, they shoot once and they hit the target. They hit the freaking, uh, you know, the bullseye every single time. But in this one, he actually had to fire like three rounds to get it. And so then this ending's very cliche. Like this, the dialogue, I feel like I've seen a million movies in this way where they're walking away from the debris and the chaos behind them. They're just leaving it behind them, and they're like, limping away from it and they're like what do we do now he's like now we fight roll credits like the way it wrapped up at the end it's like this feels like a thousand movies i've seen before and so yeah and now they're gonna make it nationwide which we knew was coming because of the prequel so yeah we knew that was gonna happen so yeah there's the end of the movie 
let's end it here. I'm done talking about this movie. Um, well, I have to talk about Forever Purge after this, so fuck. Um, <laughs> yeah, those are my thoughts on this movie. I'm not a fan. Uh, still a well-made movie, you know, from a cinematic, you know, cinematography standpoint, the acting, blah, 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 all that stuff that you would expect from a budget like this, from Universal Pictures, but I can't excuse some of the writing here and the characters sucking, and it's just like, I'm tired of this franchise, and they're gonna make more. Why? I mean, how much more milk can you milk from this fucking concept? Like, it's ridiculous. So those are my thoughts on the first Purge. What did you think about it? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you like what you've seen here, you can hit this like button and become a subscriber today just by clicking on my cartoon face in about five seconds. And until next time, keep on Persian. <laughs>